Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Well, <clears throat> we're going to be doing uh, quite a lot of stuff, but um, I don't know what compelled me, but I, I figured I wanted to do a bit more decorating in the house just to get the ball rolling. You know, I never know really what, like, how to start things off, and so it's just like whatever the first compulsion is, is like, okay, uh, I have to do this. I don't make notes. I should make notes. That would be good. And I definitely needed some tools, hence why I started blacksmithing basically right away. I knew I wanted to do some mining today, and do, uh, do mining we do. We do do that. We, we do be doing that, um, the mining. So, uh, look forward to that. That should be exciting. Uh, I don't know how exciting that is, really. But, anyway, we're, we're working on the, the smithy kind of section, the workshop, and, uh, I thought it felt a little bit cramped. I also wanted to put that trap door in there. That's mostly so that when I throw things into the water, they, they, they land right in, and I don't have to worry about overshooting. Um, also, I just think it looks kind of nice. So I expanded things just a little bit and I had to, uh, you know, basically break down a bunch of the table and expand it a little bit. And uh, one of the things I really appreciate in Vintage Story is how if you chisel an item, you could break it and it gives you that very specific custom block that you've made and then you can move it somewhere else. I really appreciate that. Helps a lot um, and like it means that you can you can tweak things later on if you need to. So I, I did, I did tweak, I did much tweaking. So um, here is the tweaking <laughs> we did. I, uh, as you can see, I've expanded the table basically all over, all throughout that line, except for like a small entrance at the corner. I think that works out. I don't see myself needing to get out on the other side. I probably will change my mind again, but whatever, it's fine. And uh, since I had a bit of extra room, that meant I could expand this kind of like uh, actual work like forge area with the with the the hood and the chimney and uh, actually have my tools next to it so now that area is I, as, I, as far as I'm concerned it's as good as it can possibly be and it feels good and it doesn't feel cramped and uh, yeah it's it's all very good um, also needed to kind of consist you know put in the the detail work that I had put in to the rest of the table on the rest of these blocks since I had to expand them. Uh, I do wish that maybe there was a bit of extra, um, you know, features with the chisel that let you do this more easily. Maybe like kind of copy a detail on a block and then like, uh, you know, so similar to clay forming, let you just like, okay, I'm right click and then it will do all of the same stuff to the next block along. I know it's complicated to do and so I'm not really complaining, but it would be a feature I would super appreciate. Once I was done on the workshop, I was planning to do some mining, and since people pointed out to me that magnetite is actually iron, um, I decided to go and get some iron, because, uh, you know, that would be super helpful and uh, kind of round out our whole tech tree a little bit. But uh, this turned out to be a more complicated task than I originally set out or expected it to be. Um, this is our magnetite or magnite rich area um, here and uh, it was kind of filled to the brim with drifters and all kinds of nasties and I was not long for the world in this in this um, particular instance. I tried my best and I did fight out. I figured if I fight them all off it would take them a bit longer to respawn and I, I could actually start to like you know look around for some some materials but that didn't um, that, that wasn't the case. They, they just kept kind of kept spawning and uh, you know I also decided to do this at nighttime. Like I said I've been becoming a little bit more bold and comfortable with doing things at nighttime and that may have hurt me here and, and actually um, kill me. So <laughs> who knows? I don't know. Uh, I figure darkness is bad no matter whether it's at night or at the daytime. So it doesn't matter if I go out at nighttime or not. But anyway, this, uh, you know, there's, there's the killing blow. I actually died by a rock, so that was no good. So once um, I came back after, after death, I decided to do things a bit more safely and just dig down into a hole uh, and then cover up the exit so that I couldn't get surprised by baddies. Um, this is obviously uh, also flawed. 
but at least it did give me offer me a bit of solace or safety uh, while I was digging down. Unfortunately, you know this. You know, despite having the entire chunk to myself and digging down as far as I could, I uh, this was like really difficult. Like I, I just straight up could not find basically any ores. Like having checked the the not the surface but the node. Um, or maybe the other way around, I can't remember. But basically, like, the spawn percentage of the ores in this section, it told me, like, pretty rich magnite and limonite. And we'll get to limonite in a second. People have been hearing me talk about limonite. That they may have seen a disaster, or not necessarily a disaster, just a funny circumstance hitting in the future. And, uh, you know, you weren't wrong. So, uh, after digging down, you can see our, my, my, um... Uh, like distance down underground now is I'm at like block 42 here and you can see that my gear in the bottom there is spinning pretty quickly uh, That's because I'm you know 41 36 now is Pretty deep. That's 36 blocks above basically the floor of the world And I checked you know, I did check uh, where where does magnite uh, tend to spawn uh, it's very rich in andesite, and it's also it has a very, very large spawn radius. Um, it's it's basically all of under under sea level. But here's the uh, the limonite. I, I I saw that there was a vein of limonite, and I figured, well, if I'm not going to get iron, I could get limite because that would that would be uh, just another box checked. I have the borax now, but limestone that would be just fantastic, right? Well, it turns out limonite is not limestone. I know that's probably obvious to a lot of people, but for the rest of you, uh, like me, you might have thought that those two minerals were related, and they're not actually at all. Um, limonite is in fact titanium, and limestone is limestone. And I don't even think that limestone, I, I don't know if it even shows up on your radar, like with the prospecting pickaxe. There's our death, that's our first death by starvation, by the way. Um, but yeah, limonite, that would be titanium. Titanium is the most useless material you can find in the game, despite being very valuable, or rare, I suppose. But basically, it's a feature that has not been like fully fleshed out in the game yet. One of the rare instances of, like, well, the game's not done yet. It's still technically in like alpha or beta or whatever. Um, it feels very full, but it's, it's still, you know, got ways to go. And titanium is not a thing you can really make use of yet despite needing tier five tools to make use of it. So I'm pretty sure that means we need steel, uh, which is not something I've even like contemplated trying to get. So, you know, let's let's get our windmill first and then we can actually start processing uh, advanced ores. Uh, never, you know, never mind the iron, we, we can't, you know, or sorry, never mind the titanium, we can't even do iron yet. So having been a little bit disappointed by that, um, you know, fruitless mining effort uh you know there's there's a multiple there's multiple accomplishments or goals when i go out mining one is to get ores or minerals and then another one is to get materials like claystone for building up the uh cottage and i mean it's been this thing has been a cottage it's been a workshop it's been a smithy it's been a warehouse and now i think um after the uh, you know once this episode is over I think you'll agree, it is now also a barn. It just kind of looks like a barn now. Um, I, that wasn't really the vibe I was going for, and, you know, I will make efforts to avoid that vibe, because <laughs> I don't necessarily want it to feel like a barn, but it does kind of feel like a barn, and there's not really a lot I can do about that right now. Um, you know, that, that being said, barn vibes are not necessarily, uh, you know, bad. Uh, are they better or worse than cottage core? I don't know. You be the judge. You tell me. I'm sure there's like a, uh, a some kind of Gen Z in, in the comments that could tell me what is what is better, a farm vibes or cottage core? I can't, I don't know. Um, I decided to um, kind of trickle down this roof a little bit. Um, after you know, the, like I said, the, the the roof is a little bit weird since there is an uneven um, like I have a, a basically an odd numbered roof for the gear uh, like that's above the large gear and then i have an even peaked or uh, um pointed roof 
that is just the roof. And so those two things kind of clash together a little bit. So I, I, I made an effort to, to try and make them meld together in some kind of interesting way. And it does add a bit of character to the roof. I kind of like it, but again, I might change my mind later. I really liked what was going on here. I wanted to put wood planks for these side walls. And to be honest, I should have been using wood for a lot of stuff instead of claystone. Like a lot of the structure of the roof is, is stone and that would just make it ridiculously heavy. And I just think that I probably should have been using wood instead. It makes a lot more sense. Um, but honestly, I was using the claystone more as a uh, color thing and uh, also as a easier, you know, it makes it easier to place roof than anything else. The planks are not really, I guess they are easier to obtain than anything else than the, than the claystone. So I don't know, maybe maybe it was, uh, this whole thing was a little bit misguided or uh, badly planned, but whatever. I, I kind of like how it turned out and, and like turned out in past tense. The roof is now kind of finished, basically. Like I think it's fair to say, like it is now a complete roof that provides like actual shelter and warmth like it's it's functionally complete and what i mean by that is it's functionally complete but um aesthetically it, it's still got a lot of work a ahead of us um but you know now that i like i have enough shingles i have tons and tons of shingles in fact i really didn't need that many more to complete the roof so uh, i started getting to work on the windmill uh basically tower that is going to be um, kind of an offshoot shoot of the cottage. Um, so this this is already turning out to be a pretty nice project, uh, but I did run out of claystone, so it's now, uh, it's it's unfinished. But I the nice thing about making way more roof uh, pieces than, than you need is you have the flexibility to basically make whatever you want. Like you don't have to worry anymore. You can like, oh yeah, I need a greenhouse roof. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and make that and that is probably after well i kind of want to finish the windmill now now that it is like looking unfinished but that is probably the next project is um working on the greenhouse lots of lots of work ahead of us lots of work to be done after by the way like i haven't even talked like once once i have the windmill um finished at least the structure and the greenhouse um structure complete what is after that probably a barn um and i also want to have an outdoor area for uh, bloomery basically just an outdoor workshop it won't be like it won't really have a lot of features it's just an outdoor area that i can place the bloomeries um you know that are not inside the house and i don't really want to stuff them inside that area what is the reason or purpose for that well it's really just an aesthetic or like um immersion thing is i don't think i would want to have things smelting inside the house if they weren't near that forge or chimney like hooded area there's our per episode falling off the roof by the way um yeah i wouldn't want to basically be smelting things without ventilation and so it makes sense to smelt them outdoors but at the same time uh, i i would want them to have some kind of shelter from you know weather and stuff like that so i don't know um, there's a lot of there's a lot of options there. I might actually do a little bit of research, just like well, what did what did people do? What does an outdoor workshop actually look like? Um, do you need to protect things from the cold? I mean, it is the winter time. Does that not make things more difficult to smelt? Uh, probably it does. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. It's a lot of a lot of things to consider. A lot of uh, variables, but. Anyway, this windmill, at least the windmill roof is done, and then we can start thinking about flourishes and little little, little added you know, extra things like bloomery areas that don't even really need to be made. Like, I could just go ahead and place bloomeries inside the, the house, and there's plenty of room for that, so there's no, no need to be making extra rooms, but... I mean, that's, you know, I gotta do something, and, you know, eventually we are gonna hit a wall. It's gonna take probably another 20 23 episodes before it happens but we are going to hit a wall of like there's nothing left for me to accomplish i've got you know the best armor i've got the best weapons and i've you know faced all the demons that there are so there's not much else to do so i don't know maybe maybe at that point i consider making a uh you know 
a vacation cottage or somewhere and somewhere somewhere that is like farther away in a different biome or something like that or maybe i just call the series there and start a new world i don't know it's not even something i didn't ever think the series would honestly last long enough for me to even consider what what will become of it after we have accomplished all of our goals and made a very nice looking place that is you know functionally complete who knows but anyway this windmill is far from com complete and i'm gonna have to i'm gonna need a lot of fat and resin in order to complete the major parts of it um the functioning parts the actual mechanical parts um so that'll take me a little while uh and you know animal husbandry is still something i have to do but here's a nice shot of of the uh, the house with the completed roof on all sides or at least both sides that matter and uh, that the windmill and you know it's it, honestly even incomplete I thought it looked really nice I just thought it was it was really good it also reminds me that I'm gonna have to get a lot more flax in order to like complete the blades like there's a lot more to do so we'll probably we've got many many episodes ahead of us before we think about ending any series like this but Anyway, uh, I'm going to kind of leave it here while I try not to freeze to death. That was a really close call. I was both starving and freezing, but I managed to get next to that fireplace in time. If you enjoyed that, uh, this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.